Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your January 2018 astral update. It's Rena here. I feel kind of funny calling this an update because we're talking about the first month of the year. So it seems like it's a whole new cycle. And yet we're having a full moon on the first day. In some places, it'll be on the second of the month, but that's still the beginning of the year. And full moons typically are associated with endings, but they can also be revelations and secrets being revealed. This is a super moon, by the way, at 11 degrees of Cancer. 11 is a master number. And those two pillars form a portal that is also descriptive of 2018. It adds up to an 11. And you never break down those master numbers into a two. So it's very interesting. 11 is the number of the spiritual teacher. It's funny, that's my life path. So I've always resonated with that number uh, ever since I found that out. But the January is a one <laughs> um, month being, you know, one. So we're talking about a lot of beginnings, new beginnings, even though full moons are more so associated with endings. So because of this, you as a cancer individual may feel like there's the end, end of an era in some way. Now, of course, you have full moons every year. So this isn't like something out of the norm. But there are other things that are going on that I think really kind of heighten this. And I'll get into that in a minute. And then uh, we have the next day on the second, Uranus going direct. When this happens, uh, by the way, Uranus is going direct at 24 degrees of Aries. And this is your 10th house of career. So you should start to see a little bit of uh, stabilization as much as you can have with Uranus in the 10th house when it comes to your career matters. Okay. But when Uranus goes direct, all the plants will be direct. And this is a green light from the universe to move ahead with your projects. Because um, especially in January, being a cardinal month for most of the month, I should say, until it goes into Aquarius, which is a fixed sign, you have this a lot of this Capricorn energy, which is a cardinal sign like you, you are a cardinal sign too, cancer. So cardinal signs are all about taking charge, uh, taking action, okay, taking charge of a situation, making moves, doing, not talking, doing. And so you're going to feel this sense of maybe even urgency in certain ways in your life. And this is great because it's very energizing for all of us. And so we, because we've had Mercury retrograding in most of the month of December, and I'm sure in most parts of the world, uh, in December, a lot of things are not up to speed because of holiday stuff happening too, not just Christmas or other religious and similar holidays that are occurring in December as well. So now it's January and we feel like we're getting back to normal. And that's actually a good thing when you're trying to do your, you know, accomplish your goals. So Capricorn is all about goal uh, setting and achieving. So it's a perfect time for that. Mercury is uh, in Sagittarius still until uh, the 11th. And by the way, I think that on the 10th, it goes back into that degree that, that it was when it retrograded. So it will be totally out of its shadow. And this may or may not be something that you will feel, but it's important to know it's noteworthy because especially if you have any planets close to that degree in a certain house, you may have been affected by the Mercury retrograde, especially so at, at around 28 degrees of uh, Sagittarius. And that, you know, could be something that was still lagging until January 10th. But then the next day, Mercury goes into Capricorn. 
And this is your seventh house of committed partnership. Now, this is really featured for you, Cancer, in the month of January. And how it goes for you is only, you know, it depends on the individual. Of course, this is general reading. And if you're watching this for your, well, it doesn't matter if you're watching for your sun or your rising, it still matters what degree of cancer you are, sun or rising, in order for these dates to be uh, accurate in terms of the timing. But, you know, in a general sense here, we're looking at Mercury going into that seventh house, and you may be discussing something with a partner. Now, on the first, that with that full moon in your sign, that meant that the sun was in the seventh house in Capricorn at the same degree. And there, there was an opposition there with your first house. And that could have been some kind of um, tug of war involving a um, committed relationship. Some of you may actually be separated from your partner because of other challenging aspects or transits that have been occurring in the last uh, 10 years even because Pluto went into your, went into your seventh house in 2008 in the sign of Capricorn. So Pluto ain't, you know, lightweight, you know, it's, it's very transformative, but in your seventh house, if you have a marriage that is not working, it will see the rot. It will, it will like, you know, instinctively, point out what is in need of healing. Now, it can be a good thing, but it can be very disruptive in the short term. Um, the, the interesting thing about you, Cancer, is now you have Saturn in that seventh house because Saturn recently went into Capricorn as well. So another heavy hitter. And if some of you are still married after all of this, you're going to have, a, you're going to be very clear about your relationship uh, by the time the Saturn transit is all over. And Saturn is one of these planets that doesn't like excess. It doesn't like anything that is unusable. So if your relationship survives uh, the Pluto transit, Saturn is the cleanup crew and is going to really make sure that things are on point. Um Pluto is going to be in, in your seventh house until 2023. And Pluto is more of a, a, it totally changes. It's a change agent in terms of like um, making, you know, possibly giving you a totally different idea of what relationship is all about. You may have certain conditioned ideas that change over time due to Pluto's influence. And with Saturn, it's more about the nuts and bolts of things. So I would say that Saturn is a more practical influence and deals with, you know, is this relationship adding to my life? You know, uh, there's a term and I can't think of it right now where they call it uh, cost benefits ratio or something. But you know, am I getting as much as I'm giving? from this relationship. And if not, you know, why am I in, you know, kind of clarifying, why am I here? And getting clear on things. Um, I wouldn't call Saturn a romantic influence. So it's not about falling in love with your partner. It's more about do we work well together? Do we have do we enhance each other's life lives? So you have that happening. And then you have the new moon on the 16th at 26 degrees of Capricorn. This can breathe new life into a relationship that has been struggling. This can be a new chapter. And by the way, the chapter could be divorce. Even though it's committed partnership, it's also legal situations. So a new moon could bring a new chapter, which connects to divorce. But I think that if that's the case, you're going to be okay with it because it's going to be something 
that you realize is for the best. And it may even be at that time of that full moon that you, f you really d decide that it's over with. A lot of times with cancer, uh, we talk about the clinging, the emotional clinging. And cancer, you know, the sign of the crab with the claws, getting the, your claws into somebody and having a hard time letting go. And sometimes that is like an instinctive response. It's not necessarily due to true love and maybe a need for security, emotional security, financial security. And when you really have a revelation about what this has done to you, you realize that you're better off alone. And that's maybe what that full moon brings, because it's going to be in your sign. So you're going to be thinking about yourself and your needs and your needs will be highlighted at that time. And so yeah, so you're going to have that new moon. And then the very next day, you have Venus, which has been in your seventh house in Capricorn going into your eighth house. And the eighth house is related to sex, death and other people's money. I mean, you can't put it more succinctly than that. But the thing about it in January for you is that you have Venus in the committed partnership sector for half of the, the month, which is great, because that can smooth over any kind of uh, ruffled feathers if the relationship has been struggling. And then in the eighth house, it can be that you profit somehow financially from money that you did not earn. So whether it's a divorce settlement, whether it's, or even some kind of an agreement that you come to out of court, like an out of court uh, settlement, whether it's an inheritance or, I don't know, some kind of money gift that you are given uh, that can be part of that. Venus in the eighth house can mean that you dig deeper romantically with your partner. And for those marriages or other related types of relationships that are, that have seen some um, difficult days in the past, you may actually have a sense of deeper emotional bonding with Venus in the eighth house, where you're not just playing out your roles of man and wife, um, you know, things like that. So that could be very helpful for relationships that um, have been recently challenged. Mars has been in your fifth house or will be in the fifth house for most of the month in, in the sign of Scorpio, a fellow water sign. So uh, for those people who are single, this can be like real sexy. Uh, I'm thinking of Borat, sexy time. You can make sexy time with somebody because Mars is a libido and the fifth house can be recreational sex. Now, I'm not talking about sleeping around. It could be with one particular person, but it could be just dating very extensively because the fifth house is romance, okay, falling in love, and you may be really involved with one person. But the fifth house is also like um, sports and uh, parties. So you may be very social in January for most of the month. You may be very, very... uh romantic with somebody and it's kind of like this fun fun thing because the fifth house can be fun and games and entertainment like going to concerts but parties you could be like just having that kind of um, social life that's very vigorous for some reason but you could be doing some sport some some exercise but it's just particularly like um, sports you know where you're, you're doing a game and things like that. And that's, that could, um, be something that shows that in January, you're going to have a lot of pleasure, you know, fifth house is pleasure, but also creative pursuits. Uh, if you have some kind of an artistic project, you might be very immersed in that. 
And then it goes into your sixth house on the 26th. And then you may be even like engaging in some exercise routine because the sixth house can be health. If you're, if you have a workplace, watch out for any kind of conflicts. Mars can bring that in the sixth, when it's in the sixth house with coworkers and, and that sort of thing. But you could just be working your butt off. And, um, so on the 31st, we have a total lunar eclipse at 11 degrees of Leo. There's that 11 again. And um, that's a blue moon, second full moon in a month. So this is going to hit your second house of earned income, Cancer. And this is a very important house to you because you are very concerned with financial security. And you've already had uh, a total solar eclipse here on August 21st. So this is your book end. Uh, this is the ending of that story. So whether it was some kind of a contract for the last six months or so that um, is over now, and now that income stream is finished, or whether you are retired, and now you're not going to be earning money um, that could be the case or someone who maybe you didn't want to leave your job, but um, there was a layoff that's possible, but it can be, you know, usually they say that um, with lunar eclipses, something is, is um, taken away from you. If that's the case and you're going, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. It doesn't necessarily mean that it can have, um, there are other possible possible manifestations of this. This is a full moon that's very powerful. So all of those things that we attribute to the full moon, it could even be, to me, it could be an increase, to be honest with you, because I always see full moons, from everything I've read, full moons are the most potent time, um, magical time. So I don't just automatically think that these are endings, although I do think that with eclipses, they are change agents. So even with solar eclipses, they're, the, the change may mean endings, uh, possible beginnings with the lunar eclipse and endings with the solar eclipse. You never know how it's going to all manifest, but the theme will be with your um, with the money that you earn, okay, or possessions that you own. Now, it could be that you have been working towards downsizing and that this is the time that it really appeals to you. By the way, don't look at this date as being when things happen because it's it doesn't have to be at all. It can be even a little bit before this, but definitely after this. Um, I even read up to a year, but at least six months. So when people in general are capable of accepting things that are beyond their control, whether it's something coming into their lives that they didn't expect or something leaving, um, then they're really, I think, the most powerful because they're not um, dependent on a particular situation being there all the time because life is about change. There's, there's no question about that. And even when things are positive and they are, you know, a new, like a change for the positive, it can still be stressful because it's different. It's change, you know, change can be stressful in and of itself. But, um, I just read a quote recently that really resonated with me. It said, we're not here to be comfortable or to be safe. And I thought that makes a lot of sense to me because of course you don't want to live on the edge and to be in a dangerous situation. But I think way more people worry about things that are likely to not occur than those who are, uh, you know, content with, accepting life on its own terms. And for cancers, I think the more you can 
trust that the universe has your back, the more you're going to feel at ease on a regular basis. So, Cancer, I wish you all the best in January. And if you'd like a private reading with me, one that I'm promoting uh, particularly that is along uh, these lines is my natal chart interpretation. I've recently added an additional 10 minutes, so now it's 70 minutes. And um, the link is below for my online store for all of my different offerings. I wish you all the best in January. Take care. Bye.